Hello everyone, I'm Chan from Talent Market. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to check the previous year TCS Digital Advanced Quantitative Questions. As we know, TCS is planned to hire 2023 batch students through on-campus placements for both ninja and digital roles. This video will help you to prepare for it. Also, we have started our live training for TCS Integrated Test Preparation, which is also known as ITP, in which we will cover previous year questions of foundation section for numerical, verbal, and reasoning ability, and also the advanced section, which contains quantitative reasoning ability and coding. Also, join our social media handles like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp group. We constantly update placement preparation updates and off-campus updates on our pages. Links to all these handles are given in the video description. So before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. And join TCS Masterclass for structure preparation, coupon code and link are in the description section. So let's get started with the very first question. One small point before I do start. When I display the question, solve the question by pausing the video or at least give a try by pausing the video. Once you are done solving or trying, just resume the video and check with the video so that you can see whether you're able to solve the questions before explanation or not. Okay, let's start this question. The total number of male students studying computer science in all five institutes is what percent is more than the number of female students studying engineering in institutes of A, C, D, E and character one decimal place. And if you observe the question, it's from data interpretation, that is very clear. Now, what exactly you have to find is what data interpretation is. The main important aspect of answering data interpretation is getting what exactly is the requirement. So first you need to find the requirement and then only go with the data. So what is that? Let us see. Now given the question is, what percent is more than one to the other? So it clearly says they are asking about the percentage change that happened. We all know what is percentage change formula. What is percentage change? And by the way, the change here is more. So that says percentage increment is nothing but the difference of the two mentioned entities, that is the total male students, the total male students in the branch of computer science in all the institutes, in all institutes to the difference of the number of female students, the number of female students studying engineering in institutes of A, C, D, and e upon now you all tell me what exactly we have to take in the denominator part that is nothing but the compared value percentage change is nothing but the difference upon compared value into 100 that's the formula that we can use whenever there is a comparison happening so what is the comparison value now so there are people who might think the first one and there are people who might think the second one but i'll tell you something whatever it is Compared to that, we'll take in the denominator. In basically, I'll tell you a shortcut. What is it? Whatever the terminology after than that of, you take the second part in the denominator. I hope this is very clear. So that says the female students in the engineering department in A, C, D, and D. So these are the parameters that I wanted. So this is a requirement. So I got to know my requirement. Now we'll go step by step so that I can answer my question at Please in a correct way, right? So if you represent the question itself in the wrong way, definitely whatever you do is going to be wrong. All right, now let us go with that. So I have three data here. First of all, institutes, next department, and then the male students. If you observe institutes is the over here, that is the first data, the primary data, because all the students are mentioned over here. And then the second point is mentioned in the departments, that is the percentage of the students. And then the third, in the percentage of the students, they have mentioned the male and the female ratio. Right now, let's go with that. By the way, at times the pictures might not be clear, so I'll just represent the numbers if they are not clear. And uh, to be very specific, this is 15, 16 percent, 15 percent, 21 percent, 10 percent, 18 percent, and 20 percent. All right, so that are the given values. So let us go with the very first one. So let us solve this one total male students in CS in all the uh, institutes. All right, let's start with the very first data. Now, the first data I require is total male students this exactly you can use to solve the question of any data impression so that there is no confusion what exactly to be found out 
in CS in all institutes. Right. First of all, let us find all student uh, in the all the institutes. So how many students in all the institutes? So this is twelve hundred. This is fifteen hundred, and this is nine hundred, and this is going to be thousand, and this is my eight hundred value. Yeah. So when I add all these values, I get the students in all the institutes as how much? Exactly. The very first parameter, the students in all institutes. In all institutes, we get it as five thousand four hundred. Now the next part, what I should find the next part? The next part is in CES, how many students are there? In all the institutes. So in CS, if you do observe in computer science, there is twenty one percent of the students. So CS has twenty one percent of the students. CS students. So twenty one percent of five thousand four hundred. That will give me what? That is going to give me one thousand one hundred thirty four. All right. Now next, the last part I require is nothing but the male students in that. The male students in CS department in CS. All right. In all the institutes, and that's going to be what. Now, if you observe in CS, which is over here, there is a ratio given between the male and the female, which is ten is to eleven. So the ratio given is ten is to eleven. We have discussed multiple times. Whenever ratio given, the values are going to be the x variable consisting. So that's going to be male are ten x in number, female are eleven x in number. So totally, can I say twenty one x in number? And given twenty one x is what twenty one x is nothing but one one three four. So what is one x? One x is going to be fifty four. If one x is fifty four, I need the male, which is nothing but the ten x. So that's going to give me five forty as my final value, which is required. All right, I hope everything is crystal clearly explained, guys. Step by step. Male students, yes, in all institutes. First, we'll find the all institute students, and then we are going to find how many students are there in the CS department, all institutes. And then, male students in the CS department of all institutes. So that step by step process will definitely give you the right answers. Similarly, now we can go with the second part. All right. So what is the second part? The second part is, if I'm not wrong, female students in engineering in A, C, D, and E institutes. All right. First of all, A, C, D. How many students are there in A, C, D? A C D E. This is nine hundred for your information. So that's going to give me students in A C D E institutes are three thousand nine hundred. Now the second part. What I require? I require engineering students in that institutes. Engineering students in that institutes. So the engineering percentage, if I'm not wrong, twenty percentage. So twenty percentage of three thousand nine hundred. Two zeros again gets cancelled, and that's going to give me the value of seven eighty. Now, is this my final value? No, I want the female students in that engineering department. So, female students in the engineering department of all the above parameters. That is going to be now actually given ratio. What is the given ratio? Ratio given is two is to three. Yeah, two is to three. Male and female. So again, the male are how many? Male are two x, and the female are. Three x. So totally, there are five x in number. Five x is equal to seven eighty. So each x is how much? Each x is going to be one fifty six. If each x is one fifty six, I want female, which is nothing but three x, and that will give you three into one fifty six will give you four sixty eight. Now, hence proved, the male are definitely more than the female. That says percentage more is nothing but the male percentage. We can say now finding that from the two data, we can say. Percentage increment is nothing but the difference of the values. Five forty difference of four sixty eight upon now asset to that of the compared the compared value. If I'm not wrong, is the second entity which is female students. So that is give that gives me four sixty eight into hundred. So when you solve this, you'll get the answer as fifteen point three eight percentage, which is gonna be your option D. I hope the question is crystal clear, everybody. If not, just observe the video where exactly you have a doubt. I have explained in detail, step by step. I hope this clears your doubts and this clears basically the way of solving data and question questions in TCS format. All right. Yeah. Now moving on to the next. Okay. If you observe the question, this is from a permutation combination topic because of the terminologies like choosing and thirty-six uh, balls and selecting some etc. etc. So whenever we have this selection or choosing, basically we have to do the combination part, right? So that's nothing but 
when we have combination we always go through the ncr part all right so where n is nothing but the total items and r is nothing but what everybody exactly the selected items selected items now let us go with the question the number of ways of choosing x plus 8 balls out of 36 balls is equals to choosing x balls out of 36 balls find the number of ways of choosing x plus 5 balls out of 20 25 balls i hope some of you might not understood how to represent the question basically i'll help you now for example for example let us say you have seven balls and you have to select only three balls out of seven now tell me what is the number of selections you can do very simply as total balls are n and selected balls are three that's going to give me 7c3 which is nothing but ncr so similarly given there are total of 36 balls so n value is 36 in the case 1 and r value is how much x plus 8 so that's going to give me 36c x plus 8 is the first entity now the second case given is equals to choosing okay this is equals to choosing given n are 36 again the same number but now the selected are different which is x in number in the second case so that gives me 36x so here comes a point the main point of the question what is that look if you are not known of some properties in term in terms of permutation combination you cannot solve this question what is it basically people will get stuck here look when i have 7c3 i can easily write in a shortcut 7 into 6 into 5 upon 3 into 2 into 1 to answer the question or what exactly is the value of 7c3 correct but do we have any such value in the base part to write in this way no here we have 36x as i don't know what exactly is the value of this variable called x i cannot write in this other format and find out the value now what i can do so the problem is here so here comes a property in permutation combination what is a property for example i'll tell you now right let us say you have a uh, 4c3 now can you all tell me 4c3 can also be represented as what exactly it can also be represented as 4c1 why since ncr is always equals to nc n minus r all right so that is going to give me 4c3 is equals to 4c1 always now here the property is whereas n that is nothing but the 4 is always equals to the base parts of the both that's going to give me 3 plus 1 right now what exactly is the property the property is going to be if i'm taking ncp is equals to ncq of course q is nothing but n minus p that's there so where i'll get the n value as p plus q this is the main property that one must be known of then only you can solve this question so definitely as an top value is uh, same the n value is same so can i say n value is always equals to the p which is nothing but the x plus 8 in the first one and the q that is nothing but the x in the second one and that gives you 36x is equals to 2x is 2x plus 8 2x is equals to 28 and x is equals to 14 is that clear everybody now x is equals to 14 i got to know what is x value so now can i go to the question part yes definitely i can go with the question part so the given question part is find the number of ways of choosing x plus 5 balls we all know what is x value that is nothing but 14 so 14 plus 5 will give me 19 out of 29 balls so i have to find the selection or the combination of choosing 19 balls out of 25 that's going to give me 25 c 14 plus 5 right so 25c 19 can i take this no we will write basically in terms of nc n minus r because always make sure the base part is as far as from the top part then only we can answer we can represent simply all right so that's going to give me 25c 25 minus 19 will give me 6 so now everybody if i solve this 25 into 24 into 23 start with 25 write till 6 terms in the numerator so 1 2 3 4 5 6 upon whatever the base part right that factorial 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and when you solve this question you will get the value as 177100 which is nothing but option b i hope everything is clear everybody look the main point is to have an idea of this one property if not you cannot solve the question i hope everything is clearly explained guys all right okay in this question there are three numbers and 
when the three numbers leave the remainder x in each case when divided by the greatest number called y. Okay, the value of 2y minus x is what? Fine, there are two variables here. One is x and the other is y. Where y is the number which is actually dividing these three numbers and leaving a reminder called x in each case. So to explain in short, when 4121 divided by a number called y, it gives me a reminder called x. Similarly, when 4973 and also 6464, when divided by y, leaves me the same reminder called x. Now, the question is very simple. We have to find the value of 2y minus x, where I need to find out what is y and what is x. How can we check this question is what we are going to explain. Whenever such questions are given, actually, this is a standard question in the HCF part. Why I am talking about HCF? Because there is a hint in the question called greatest number. Whenever you have greatest number or greatest divisor, it's nothing but HCF or GCD. Okay, one more information. When given the least number, then we'll go with the exactly LCM part. But as given greatest number, we have to find what is the HCF. So finding the HCF of these three numbers, leaving the same remainder is what we have to do. But as I told, there is a standard problem and we have a standard property. What is it? Now, HCF or GCD of three numbers as given here, A, B, C, leaving the same reminder in each case, the same reminder in each case when divided by n, when divided by n, where here given by, so we are talking by over here, by given by, and what is that y or what is that number? The number is nothing but the HCF or GCD of A difference of B, B difference of C, and C difference of U. So once you do this, you'll get nothing but the number called Y. Now let's do that. Y is equals to HCF or GCD of 4, 1, 2, 1 difference. Again, difference means modulus. I hope you know this. 4, 9, 7, 3, comma, 4, 9, 7, 3 difference of 6, 4, 6, 4, comma, 6464 four difference of 4121. All right. Now, so what's the difference? HCF of 4121 minus 4973 will give you 852. As you have online calculator, you can just simply use that for finding the easiest calculation. Do not just solve on your own. As you have on screen calculator, try to use that. Now, 4973 difference of 6464 four gives you 1491, and the last difference will give you 2343. Three. Now, the toughest job is nothing but finding the HCF. Look, uh, when you try to solve the HCF in a general way, that is finding the factors of 852 and finding the factors of 1491 and finding the factors of 2343, it definitely takes more time. But how to do in a minimal time is what our shortcut is. Now, so I'm telling you a shortcut how to find the HCF of two numbers or three numbers or whatever it may be. Right now here we have three numbers, right? But our shortcut will be applied only for two numbers at a time. Now, what is the shortcut? I'll tell you. Now, first, let us take the first two numbers called 852, 1491. And then we'll get an answer, right? That answer in the third number will take and then repeat the same process. I hope you understand the point. If not, observe the video one more time, particularly this part, right? First two numbers, we will get an answer. The answer and then the next number will repeat the same process. All right, now let's do the process. What is the process? Very simple. It will give you definitely in less time when compared to the general one. Now, take the highest number upon the lowest number. I always do this. You can take lowest by highest also. Now, when you take in the highest by lowest, just calculate the calculations. If I'm not wrong, the two numbers are the digital sum are the multiples of three, right? So the numerator digital sum will give you a digital sum of 15. So 15 means one plus five, six. So six is a number which can be divisible by three. So that says the numerator is a multiple of three. Similarly, the denominator is also a multiple of three. So cancellations, three fours are 12, two nine, three nines are 27, two one, three sevens are 21. Yes. And then similarly, three twos are six, two five, three eights are 24, one two, three fours are 12. All right. Now, so if I'm not wrong, 497 and 284, this must be a multiples of 70s because 49 and 28 are multiples of 70s. Okay, very simple. Yeah, got it. 71, if I'm not wrong. 71 sevens are, if I'm not wrong, 497. Why? Because 71 sevens will give you 490 plus 7 will give you 497. Similarly, 71 fours are, right? Why? Because 
71 fours are 70 fours are 280 and one fours are four will give me 284 all right so now this is the simplest calculation we got once you got the simplest calculation take the same numerator upon denominator and just divide with the calculation you got the respective calculation look first uh, calculation is seven in the numerator so divide by seven similarly the denominator calculation is four so divide by four and therefore you'll get whatever the number you get that is nothing but the hc for both the numbers and that's going to give me 213 and 213 so the hc of these two numbers is nothing but 213 and we have one more to do what is that now finding the hc of 213 comma 234 i hope you all understood the hc of process right that everybody this is a very simple one you practice it you'll definitely have in a less time the solution now let us do for it now at least you try to solve this question as in solve the hcf part and we can continue i hope you tried now two three four three upon two one three all right now so how can you go for it so first you can do one thing you can check whether this two three four three is directly divisible by two one three in the answering calculator if i'm not wrong yes how two one three ones are and two one three elevens are will be two three four three and same process Two three four three upon eleven upon two one three upon one. The same uh, respective calculations division. So that's going to give me two one three and two one three. And therefore, therefore the HCF of eight fifty two comma one four nine one comma two three four three is nothing but what we got everybody is nothing but exactly that is two one three which is nothing but y the number. All right. Dears, again, do not mistake me. We are actually calculating the HCF of these three numbers when when a given condition called the same remainder. But we are not doing for the actual numbers. We are doing for the sub difference of their numbers. And difference of the numbers are this. So the HCF of these numbers is Y. Right? Now, talking about the remainder part. So remainder of 4121 upon 213 because the number is dividing no. So what is remainder? Now, you just do one thing. Again, I know this is a toughest job to find what is the remainder because we do only get quotients when we do in the calculator. Now do one thing. I'll I'll tell you half here. What is it? Now just do one thing. Just divide four one two one upon two one three. You'll get a quotient, right? Now what is the quotient when you get it? You'll when you just check the calculation, you'll get the quotient of nineteen point something. All right. So that says two one three nineteens can be the closest value to four one two one that we can see. Right. So when you do that, you will get actually four zero. If I'm not wrong, four seven. Right. Four zero four sevens is nothing but two one three nineteens. Now that is the closest one. If you go for one more two one three, you will get more than this number called four one two one. So what we can do? We can now take the difference of two four one two one difference of four zero. Uh, if I'm not wrong, four seven, and that gives you the remainder called seventy four. All right, everybody. I hope you all understood the point, guys. Just go for the closest multiple and then find 2134 or 2139 are. So 2139s are will be this one and just subtract from the actual number. That will give you the remainder. So the remainder is 74. I need to get the same remainder for the second one. So that's where I can prove. So remainder of what is that? We have the second number 4973. 4973 upon 213. Again, the same. Just go with the closest multiple. The closest multiple you'd get is nothing but, if I'm not wrong, 23. So 213 23s would be 4899. So just doing the same, 4973 four, minus 4899 will give the same remainder called 74 and hence proved. All right. So leaving the same remainder, you can just check with the third number also. You're going to get the same remainder. Now we know y is nothing but 213 and the x, which is the remainder, which is nothing but 74. And we want 2y minus x. So 2 into 213 minus 74. When you do calculate, you're going to get the answer as 352, which is nothing but option A. I hope you all understood the question, my dears. With the simplest calculation, also the shortcuts like HCF and all, we can do this question in a short time. I know this takes some time because of the calculations, but the calculations is what we have done in a shortcut. And that's how we can do it. All right. If you don't know the shortcuts, definitely will take more time. So why? Because you don't have any shortcuts in calculators to find the HCF and you also have the shortcuts to find the reminders in your calculators. And that's what we have explain you how to do the shortcut manner of hcf and also the reminders i hope you all thoroughly love the shortcuts guys and try to practice you'll definitely get them all right now let us move on to the next number now given the numbers 
uh, here and uh, there are certain 90 numbers over here and given the average of 90 numbers is 42 all right okay the average of first six numbers is 38.5 and that of the last 14 numbers is 45.5 i hope you are literally shocked given totally 90 numbers only but when the added first six and added last 14 how many numbers you'll get basically first 16 plus last 40 will give you some of 20 but we have only 90 numbers then how come this could happen we'll see in the question okay if the sixth number is excluded then what is the average of remaining numbers correct to one decimal so correct to one decimal means we'll get multiple decimals we have to take only one decimal in the answer all right now very simple let's start the process i hope you at least pause the video and then try to solve if yes that's good if not please try it now let us go step by step given average of 90 numbers average means sum of 19 upon 19 is nothing but 42 and when i find out uh the average the sum of 90 numbers i'll get it as 798 is the sum of all the 90 numbers right so this is the first point i have now the second point given the average of first six numbers that means sum of six by six is nothing but 38.5 but the six is first to six so sum of all the first six numbers would be when i calculate i'll get it as 231 similarly given sum of last 14 upon 14 which is nothing but average is given as 45.5 and when i do calculate the sum of first sorry last 14 numbers i do get it as 637 so i have three parameters sum of 19 numbers sum of first six and sum of last 14 basically when you add that sum of first six plus sum of last 14 you basically get sum of all 20 numbers correct but I have only 19 numbers here but we have only 19 then how come we get the 20th number as an extra one because if you do observe the sum of the 20 numbers let us see that one two three four five six seven eight nine and so on up to 20 numbers is what the sum of all these numbers now when you added the first six and then added the last 14 basically the sixth number is repeated twice sixth number is taken twice if you do observe very properly right so can i say one point in order to get the sum of all the 90 numbers what i can do can i just take some of the first six numbers plus some of the last 14 numbers and subtract one time the sixth number everybody can i do that or not definitely i can do that but do you know what is a sixth number we don't know what is the first number and we cannot say they are consecutive also because it is not given so there is no chance of directly getting what is a sixth value but there is a source what is that if you observe we have sum of 19 which is not exact nothing but 798 sum of first six which is nothing but 231 and sum of last 14 which is nothing but 637 right therefore we are going to get the sixth number which is nothing but ex let us see so that's going to give you the x value as how much everybody the x value is going to be 70 right but is this your answer called 70 did they ask what is a sixth number no they ask you one point from the 19 numbers actually sixth number is excluded so the 70 number is excluded from all the 90 numbers all right now we know what is the sum of all the numbers the sum of all the numbers is actually 798 so i can say that 798 minus 70 is what the excluded part and we'll get the sum of 18 numbers now right sum of 18 numbers is how much we got sum of 18 numbers we could get, get it as 728 but is the sum is asked no the average is asked now finding the last point of the question average of 18 numbers so sum of 18 upon 18 we already know what is sum of 18 that is 728 upon 18 will give you 40.4444 where we have to take one decimal only and that's going to give you 40.4 which is nothing but option c i hope everybody understood clearly this solution right so first finding sum of 19 numbers from the given question next finding sum of first six and then finding sum of last 14 now the condition is the main point over here if you don't understand this i'm sorry you cannot solve this question because this is a logic that we have to understand only we have 19 numbers but how did you get the 20th number because of the sixth number being added twice 
So we have to subtract one time the sixth number only once, right? Sixth number is subtracting only once since it is taken twice is the logic. Then we'll get sum of all the 19 numbers. We all know sum of 19 numbers is nothing but seven and eight. Now, similarly, sum of first six, similarly for sum of last 14. And substituting, we'll get the sixth number is nothing but 70. And given if the sixth number is excluded from the numbers, so from sum of all the numbers, if the sixth number is included, the sum of the resultant, which is 18 numbers, is going to give me 728. But the question is regarding the average. So average of 18 would give me 40.4, which is nothing but option C. Right? So getting the logic is very, very important, my dears. If you don't get the logic, you cannot solve the question definitely. So that's how. Uh, and that's why the questions are basically advanced. All right, I hope you understood the question and also the logic. So getting the logic is very uh, required. So that's all for the video, guys. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the solving and the explanation part in the questions. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you have liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. Also, join our social media handles like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp group. Links to all these are given in the description below. Thank you so much.